Uh, what's happening guys? Silent Mike here with another Q&A. If you guys aren't already, subscribe to this bitch. Give the video a thumbs up. People talking shit about me not dropping informational videos. You crazy. We got me going over your technique and form Sundays, every Sunday. Turn on the notifications to get it. Every Saturday we're dropping some kind of technique, informational video, and... Tuesday, Thursday, hopefully some kind of gym vlog or traveling vlog if I'm on the road. Uh, so I went to Twitter, Silent Mike with two Ks, Instagram and Twitter is where I gather most of these questions. And I said, what do you guys want me to talk about? Hit me with your questions. And somebody said, specialty bars, perhaps. Um, specialty, specialty bars are a decent tool. A lot of people use them, uh, especially for squats, um, sometimes for bench. I feel like they were uh, and are. Uh, necessary, if not very important, in a west side conjugate type method, which became popular and still used by many. Um, my favorite bar, if I had to choose one, is the safety squat bars, the one with kind of the pads and the handles here. Uh, one, it can save some of that shoulder and elbow tendonitis in an off season um, from being in that uh, tight back low bar position or a high bar, even save your back a little bit. Um, it does force the center of gravity, puts the, the, the weights kind of in a front squat position so it'll really test um, your upper mid back uh, and, and it can help you build up your quads. So it's something uh, I, I have some athletes use. You know, maybe it is more difficult than your regular squats. So, um, you know, 50 to 65%, anywhere from sets of five to even 12, um, use it kind of a hypertrophy work capacity movement. Other than that, some of the bars I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I mean, the camber bar is fine, but I find it doesn't, um, translate doesn't fit well to the the most pro excuse me most programs I'm sipping on that lacru got me burping I'd really be curious to know if you can stunt your beginner gains by being inconsistent if there's a way you can start over um, I don't think there is a need to start over I guess you can stunt them a little bit but uh, the majority of those beginner gains, noob gains, um, is neural efficiency. And that's why people can get much stronger in the first six months of uh, training ever, weight training, than they will build muscle in those six months. And we'll go into that next because I know there is another question about neural efficiency. Uh, you can't really start over, but you know, starting strength, kind of a linear periodization, a linear progression with that uh, works very well. And I would ride that out uh, anytime you're, you're coming back. So even me, if I take uh, which I haven't done much of, but if I get sick or take two or three weeks totally off, I'll just start at 315 for a three by five and then go 335, 345, 355, all the way up uh, and kind of linearly progress myself. Strength as it relates to neural efficiency, not just muscle size. So neural efficiency, what is neural efficiency? Neural efficiency is our CNS. When we talk about um, CNS fatigue or people throw around the CNS was ready or my CNS is fired up or my CNS is feeling bad, whatever it is, you're basically talking about the neural efficiency, uh, those electro uh, electrodes without getting too nerdy and anatomy wise, you're just, um, your brain telling your body what to do. Uh, and neural efficiency is what we can do with proper training. And like I said, especially in those beginning six months is you can train your muscles uh, to fire more muscle fibers at a time. And that's the neural efficiency of strength. So to build strength, there's multiple things we can do. Uh, we can build a bigger muscle which takes time and the bigger muscle, um, all things even will be a stronger muscle. So obviously building muscle, you need more calories, you need uh, proper training, fatigue, um, and fuel and recovery, and you need a long period of time to build a bigger muscle, but that's one getting better at the movement, uh, technical proficiency. So, uh, if your bar path becomes better or, um, your, uh, back becomes tighter or things of that nature in the squat, bench, deadlift, whatever lift it might be, clean and jerk, it doesn't really matter. These, these, all these things apply for all, all lifting weights, even uh, jumping, dunking the basketball, etc. These things all apply. So uh, becoming more efficient at the movement, being a better uh, technique wise, um, having better form. And then the last one is that neural efficiency. And that's why I'm a huge fan of uh, Dr. Fred Hatfield, Dr. Squat, uh, the CAT training, C-A-T, compensatory acceleration training, which in my opinion is the best way to train all of these things. And that uh, was another question here. What rep ranges do I train in? And anywhere from the 50 to 75% range allows us to use that CAT, the compensatory acceleration training, which basically means even though you're doing you know, 65, 70% on the bar for maybe triples or sets of five, um, and you're saving some in the tank, you're pushing into 70%. 
uh, like it is 90, 95, 100% on the bar. So you're pushing into it really hard. Uh, and in my opinion, in my past, in my um, philosophy, in my training, in my coaching, in my self lifting, I find that that is the most efficient way to, or the best way to train that neural efficiency, to train yourself to fire more muscle fibers at the same time. And that's what um, kind of Dr. Squat's methodology of training was uh and other people that i work with personally uh jeremy hamilton coached me for a long time and those are methods that he uses as well we use um lighter weights sub maximal weights and we're pushing into them as hard as we can and that goes for squat bench dead overhead almost anything uh when i come to more accessory movements when i'm trying to build that hypertrophy uh, i will go a little bit closer to failure because they're less technical movements they're less um, loaded movement, something like a pull-up or a bicep curl, you can get a little bit closer to failure because you can recover quicker. They're smaller muscles and you're using less load. If I'm curling 35 pounds, I can go to failure, um, recover in a day and do it again. If I go to failure on a back squat, which may be uh, 500 pounds, it's using a lot more musculature, it's a lot more overall load and the systematic stress, the general stress of my entire body, my muscles, my muscles, my uh, CNS, uh, the neural part, all of it will be too fatigued to squat again in two or three days. So that's why we save more in the tank there. Woo, that was a mouthful. So training, um, speed training, I guess, dynamic effort training, that's another way um, that people use the, the same thing the same tank, you hired me uh, to train that way, to uh, train the neural efficiency, to train to be faster, to train to be stronger. Um, you can also do that by training heavy. You know, uh, the Bulgarian method, heavy singles, um, closer to failure, although uh, some people that doesn't work for, again, the Bulgarian method was was for weightlifters, the top level weightlifters in the world. So for them squatting multiple times a day or max effort multiple times a week, um, once again, that is assist, uh, a, a assistance movement for them. But that's a whole nother story for another video, which I have talked about if you guys wanna check it out. Uh, but training heavy loads uh, and really pushing into them also trains that neural efficiency. And that's, again, leading us to another topic of daily undulating periodization. And that's kind of why we're training uh, multiple rep ranges all the time. And maybe we train some 10s to 15s, maybe we're training some 5s to 10s, and maybe we're training some 1s to 3s in varying loads, uh, because not only will we train different muscle fibers with that, but we'll have a different neural stimulus as well. If we're training 70% for sets of 10, building up some muscles, and 70% for five sets of three, and really firing into it with a compensatory acceleration training, we get a lot of different awesome results, and we're training multiple um, energy systems and multiple um, hypertrophy and muscle fibers at the exact same time. Not all muscle fibers were created equally. Hopefully that's a little bit of knowledge, a little bit more in depth of why we train certain ways that we do train. Um, some of that is on a need to know uh, basis. You don't have to know those things. If you follow a program, if you're just a casual lifter and you wanna get stronger, even the best in the world don't necessarily have to know those things if they have a good coach or a solid program to follow. Uh, but those are some of the things that go into the thought process of many of the coaches, me, myself, and I, and others around the world when we do program uh, for a certain sport, a certain athlete, a certain time period, whether it's off season, um, et cetera, going into strength training, strength and conditioning. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Again, turn on notifications. Technique video dropping tomorrow. Appreciate you guys. I'm out of here.